Good morning, everyone. I'm Sherry Bolo, and my partner is Mikhail Arguelas, and we are going to be reporting about Dean Worcester using the camera to justify colonization, um, the camera and the relative truth. So short background lang, so you see Dean Worcester. Next slide, please. So Dean, um, he was born in Thetford, Vermont, noong 1866. And marami siyang inaral um, na courses. So yung pinakauna was in 1884 where he studied um, biology in the University of Michigan. And then around 1887, um, yung chair of department ng zoology, si Joseph Steer, invited him to join an expedition to the Philippines. And then on 1889 naman, he graduated in AB Zoology. So si Dean, isa siyang film believer in the colonial mission. Um, so be, very pro-colonization siya. And then he was also a controversial figure kasi naging fierce opponent siya ng Philippine independence. So he visited the Philippines while it was still under the Spanish rule and until nung nag-Philippine-American war na. And he ended his career as a successful businessman, exploiting the riches of their territories. So next, yung, so as mentioned nga, um, Dean Worcester um, went to Manila during the um, colonial era. And uh, so Dean Worcester World, um, his headquarters were in the colonial government buildings in Manila. So doon naka-interrupt siya with the diverse and urbanized population. Most of them was um, in Western in religion and dress. Pero some of them, um, close collaborators with the new American regime and only a few of them captured by his camera. So ito lang, um, ito yung most yung naka-interrupt niya. Uh, these were the men and women known as illustrados. Ito yung usually nakakasama niya, ganun. And konti lang yung photos na natake niya sa mga tao. Okay, so noong 1890 to 1893, ito yung time nung pinag-expedition siya ni Joseph Steer sa Philippines. So during this time, he collected more than 3,000 specimens from birds, reptiles, mammals, butterflies, and other ethnographic objects in the Philippines. And yung first Philippine Commission naman niya, so um, this was in September 1898. Um, this included the Philippine Islands and the people of the Filipino people. So Worcester's plans, initial plan was for zoological training and it derailed um, when the president asked him um, to serve on the first Philippine Commission. So from the expedition, nag transfer siya to first Philippine Commission. And then sa commission na to, he he's with Charles Martin. Um, Charles Martin was appointed as the official government photographer ng Bureau of Science for more than a decade mula noong 1902. Charles Martin yung nag-accompany kay Worcester sa pag-document ng geography, colonial ventures of the, Philippine, of the Philippines and the Filipino locals. So next naman is yung second Philippine Commission niya. So kinutinyo niya yung pag-serve as a member. It was headed by the um, William H. Taft. Um, kasama niya pa rin yung four, men four um, mentioned name kanina um, together with Charles Martin. Uh, no 1901 until 1913, he was appointed as the Secretary of Interior of the Commission Government. Siya yung longest serving administration in the colonial government. Pero during his service, um, nakapag-publish pa rin siya ng three heavily illustrated articles sa National Geographic Magazine. His commitment to the um, civilizing mission of the colonial authority fueled yung interest niya sa local Filipino tribes. So yung um, Worcester's Memorandum, isa sa famous quotes ni Worcester was that the camera can be made to tell the truth. Um, this means that the truthfulness of photography was not inherent, but that the camera lens was um, not a transparent window uh, onto the world. So uh, meaning, yung photographer yung may power to determine the truth and ginagamit niya yung camera as a tool to tell or to reveal this truth. So Worcester believes that of um, in the teaching value of pictures. So Worcester's legacy, um, 
he ha he documented um thousands of photographs and um which involved the history of US colonialism and megasamang colonial gaze um in the Philippines. So yung archives niya are the largest collection of original negatives that was sponsored by colonial photography that's found in the United States. So ayun naman, let's talk about the um, book written by Mark Rice. It is um, Dean Worcester's Fantasy Islands, Photography, Film, and the Colonial Philippines. So dito, um, merong phot photography collection ni Dean Conan Worcester. Yung photographs niya was organized in such a way na makakategorize yung cultures sa subject niya sa Philippines and Filipino. Uh, ginawa to para mas madaling ma-differentiate yung colonizing nation. So, Worcester organized, catalog and annotated his own photo collection. Pero hindi yung photographs na yun, hindi lang siya yung um, nag-take nun. It was also taken by Frank Bourne's, um, Albert Jenks, and Charles Martin, which was the um, appointed government photographer. So, yung this, the, this book displays how Worcester used his um, photographic skills to present his visual imagination of the reality of Filipinos back then. Okay, so now, pag-uusapan natin per chapter. Um, pero since we weren't able to ha um, read the actual book, itong information na to is based on an article review ng book ni Mark Rice. So sa first chapter, it talks about camera truth. Um, ano ba yung truth according to Worcester? So Worcester communicated the truth about his subjects, which were, Filipi which were the Philippines and the Filipinos, um, by using his skill in photography. So yung truth na gustong ipahayag ni Worcester was to convince his audience um, that the Philippines was incapable of self-government. So here he justifies U.S. colonization of the non-Christian minority groups in the Philippines, um, which he saw as being guided towards a civilized community. So para kay Worcester, the camera was an instrument that's needed in revealing the truth and that the photographic process was a means of showing his own version of reality through photographs to the rest of the world. So next is the um, second chapter. So dito naman pinag-usapan yung Filipino states of nakedness and beauty. So Mark Rice, yung author, um, kinaction niya yung photos, dress and undress, para magbigyan ng emphasis yung um, clothing nila as a symbol of savagery and civilization. So, so it revealed the photographer's um, disposition in capturing subjects, leading the audience to create a prejudice um, towards their differences. Parang like set the standards of what civilized citizens of a modern society um, should appear as. Sub, um, so your subject were placed in a relation to the visual bias of the photographer. Pinagpa-compare yung Filipino natives to Afri African American, both referring to them as linked to man's primate um, ancestor, controlling people's idea of what, what a human body should look like in relation to evolution. So this was the um, figure of sequence. Uh, at the three man, three picture set of a man gradually advancing. Para ma convince yung Americans and the rest of the world uh, the beneficial effects of colonialism since um pro colonialism niya siya. Tapos, uh, pero uh, yung author, which is si Mark Rice, parang yung inexposed na yung truthful description ng photos na to. So, yung photos na to, hindi siya tinix in successive years. Yung clothing ng second photo, hindi siya related sa police force and the three man, ayan, silang tatlo, hindi sila same person. Ang same lang dyan was the first and the second. And the third was um, Don Francisco Muro, a nobleman of the Bontoc and ethno-linguistic group who was able to negotiate with Americans. Okay, now the third chapter, it talks about Worcester's representation of the Philippines to a much wider audience. So, um, according to Mark Rice, um, Worcester was anything but a marginal figure then the publication na ginawa niya noong 20th, early 20th century. So, 
um, where there's photographs that were at the very center of the entwined histories of National Geographic and American colonialism. So his images, according to Mark Rice, Worcester's images um, of a previous terra incognita, which means that regions that have not been mapped or documented, like the Philippines, um, to enter the homes of millions. So Worcester performed this process by highlighting diversity and savagery of its people and their progress during the American rule. So mayroong pinoblish na bare-breasted women that ruled, lured more views. No 1903, census photographs enabled um, careful inspection of morphological features and facilitated comparison among people, races, and nations. So this br brought contrast uh, through the different stages of development of ethnic groups, um, stressing their heterogeneity and the absence of a Filipino nation. So um, Worcester utilized still images to depict savage peoples and motion picture to emphasize developing subjects of an empire. So um, the last chapter, is, which is the fourth, it talks about the photographic project's effects. So dito na pag-usapan din na, uh, ay, um, yung Worcester's photographic project affected very real consequences with distinct political value. And sa chapter na to, parang nabanggit din yung Jones Act, formerly Philippine Autonomy Act of 1916. So um, the U.S. had acquired the Philippines in 1898 as a result of the Spanish-American War. Pero parang it did, not, it did not have any provisions on the definite time of Philippine and independence. So yung author, Mark Rice, wrote the book, um, parang kiniklaim niya na photographic transparency, objectivity, truthfulness, naturalness of and photographs without intervention in contrast to how Worcester's um, imp imparts particular truths about the social and cultural maturity of the Philippine in using these photos with different objectives, misidentifying, uh, applying camera technicalities to alter meaning. So, um, nagpo-post process, process siya in a way, parang kinakrap niya, yung focus, yung distance, color, and yung framing. So, um, most of the time, juxtaposing images to imply contrast between Americas, Americans and Filipinos. Fantasy and dreaming, yung term na ginamit as a metaphor para maintindihan yung symbolic production of racial, class, and gender otherness. Now, um, panibagong article naman ang ating pag-uusapan. This is an article by Christopher Capuzola um, titled Photography and Power in the Colonial Philippines. This talks about the U.S. conquest and occupation na nangyari noong 1898 to 1902. So, um, to um, give a brief description about the article, um, it depicts both the patriotic imagery of America's civilizing mission and harsh imagery of uncivilized wartime conduct in the Philippines. So at this time, U.S. colonized the Philippines. So I think it's about the Philippine-American War. And um, so the Philippines, coming from a Spanish outpost, transformed into the new, to the new American empire, which means that included young American soldiers, colonial authorities, and journalists nagumamit ng photography as their tool of colonial conquest. So now, Filipinos were, the, were America's new colonial subject. And Americans discovered, um, later on sa article na to, later on, Americans discovered that Filipinos were not easily controlled in the same manner of not easily controlling photographic images. So to start off, um, nagkaroon ng explosion of photographic material um, in the beginning of the of 1898, so nagarin ng snapshots, uh, story reviews, illustrated books um, that were used to explore the relationship between photography and power in the colonial Philippines. So yung naging source of images um, ng article na to is archival repositories like the Library of Congress and university collections, illustrated books, and albums. So yung photographic materials um, and other illustrated books na to, um, like um, political cartoons stood as visual materials that made way for controversial topics to be addressed um, that were often excluded sa photographic archives ng United States. So, 
So next is yung snapshots. So, so, no, 1888, um, Kodak introduced the easily developed film role. So, thus, soldier, soldiers, politicians, and, and um, journalists observed the war from across the Pacific. So, they used photographic images to come to terms with their new surroundings in Southeast Asia. So, American soldiers um, took photographs to document their daily lives and the unfamiliar world, unfamiliar world around them and the photographs into the letters they sent home para um parang kumbaga ma-update yung family nila doon kung ano yung world nila dito and um politicians hope that images of uplift and progress would fuel and the Philippine Revolution so no early days no war yung mga usually na kinakapture nila was destruction pero after nung battle no February 5th rage around Manila in every direction lahat ng may camera took snapshots of the more impressive scenes yung mga ganyan at yung sample mismo mga dead bodies and majority of the photos in, of this nature focus on enemy corpses rather than the American facilities so now, pag-asapan natin yung conquest by camera. So, um, noong 1898, nagkaroon nga ng burst of political and visual innov innovation. And yung camera um, stood as a standard visual tool in the U.S. and in the Philippines. So, camera was one of the weapons that American soldiers used. It enabled them to map locations, identify enemies, and document their destruction. Um... Uh, naging advantage to for them kasi at that time, camera was one of the most technical, technologically advanced portable material na ginagamit ng Americans during battles. So to them, mastering photographic image is key to waging war dahil it enabled them to trace information about the transportation and communication networks of both the Spanish and Philippine armies. Next is yung cartoon politics. So, political cartoon um, artist si um, Clifford Berryman na produce siya ng commentary to World War II na nag reflect sa racial and cultural superiority and power arrogance that spread, spread most of the pro-war camp in American press. <clears throat> okay. Now, pag-usapan naman natin about Bilibid, um, Bilibid Prison. So, yung Bilibid Prison is a siyang symbol of the strong connection between photography and power. Um, maraming photographs of Bilibid prisoners um, sa U.S. archives kasi uh, um, at that time, they strictly monitor Filipino revolutionaries. So, these documents of Filipino pr prisoners enabled Americans to study their physical features and body measurements and identifying criminal elements that's used for the study um, of crimin criminology, where they classify disbelieved um, prisoners as primitive society. So later on, makikita natin um, yung samples nito. So, sa civilizing mission, parang yung photographs yung naging way para mag make sense ng um, yung nyo nyo new colonial project yung photographs ng the sila ng amusing and domestic aspect of military military life na parang nagre-assure sa family nila family nila back home di ba yun tinatak nila yung photos nila sa mga letters and sinisend nila yung pa web so there is retelling that should be priced in photography um since yun yung accurately that time na yun yan yung technology na advanced na makakapag sell ng um, yung, so, itong white man's burden. So, yung soldiers nga, nagpo-post sila sa camera with visages serious and tall. American in the Philippines, parang na-entry na colonial conquest as a burden to be carried by sa mga soldiers, missionaries, doctors, and teachers. And they frequently documented their personal sacrifice, sacrifices in images sent back home since unfamiliar nga sila sa mga nangyayari pa. So next is stereo stereographic vision. So stereographs offer the seemingly authentic experience of a war and colonialism. 
parang first visual mask ni Jusha and parang ayun nagigay siya ng you are there experience kumbaga sobrang um, real nung photos to the point na parang mag-feel mo na nandun ka so consumers are so eager to obtain images of um, American new colony the serial stereo view companies send photographers to the Philippines to collect images so yung stereographic means um, two photos parang combined or pinagtatabit together side by side ayan ito yung samples okay now about post war hostilities reactions after the war so um of course these photographic records pose as evidences of the brutal re brutal reality of philippine american war although it failed to show that the most number of deaths of filipinos during the war were among the civilian population um so colonial officials exercised greater control kung paano um, kinuha at kung paano din distribute yung photos um, about the war, uh, meaning that they have full control over um, how the story of these images were told. Katulad na lamang ng controversy um, um, ng Mara Massacre, um, which revolved around officials na who asserted that the journalists distorted the facts um, circulating in newspapers, although yung photographic evidence at all made it difficult for the officials to defend their stand. Um, so by the end, um, military officials realized that the camera um, that they use for battles um, can also be used against them by anti-war critics. Yung anthropological gaze, ano siya, act of looking ng mga photographers kung paano nila tignan yung subjects nila in documenting a race or a tribe. So, yun nga, para yung photography naging way siya of seeing the Philippines that evolved from the political and military needs of the U.S. colonial government. So, si Worcester, photographic yung, yung photographic collection niya para nag-reflect siya sa way of looking to specific visual anthropology. Yung intense gaze without a camera ng mga photographer. So, necessarily, intimacy remains in the personal relationship between the photographer and dun sa subject. Yung yardstick photos, um, yung si Worcester and yung iba niya kasamang photographer use juxtaposition in their photographs to show relative size and contrast. Um, they use, they didn't use the, norm, the formal anthropology anthropometric measurement. Para ito, sarili nilang bodies yung, asya, yung ginagawa nilang yardstick. So, uh, pansin nyo, ma mahilig sila sa um, juxtaposition since parang pinagko-compare nila and mapag-usapan ulit yan. Ayun. So, related to this topic is objectification. Si Worcester nga, as mentioned nung una, he, he studied many things. Um, so he was also um, a trained ornithologist, so he's very familiar with the process of collecting, classifying, cataloging um, different species, katulad ng ginawa niya dun sa first expedition niya in the Philippines. So at siya ng ganong type of gaze, so he continued this gaze of looking at Filipino birds, for example, um, in looking at Filipino people. So he saw Filipinos as specimens for scientific studies where he turned human societies into laboratories. So an example of kung paano natin ito makikita is katulad ng um, uh, ginawa nila about um, study of criminology kanina is the anthropology and mugshot. Next slide, please. Yeah. Okay, so dito makikita natin na sa photographic collection ni Worcester um, that emerged from his practice of anthropometry which were the scientific definition of race by the use of measurements of the physical body, um, ginamit niya, nag-observe siya ng Filipinos um, by documenting their bodies. And this documentary practice inspired the latest technique of criminology, as mentioned a while ago, which were called uh, the criminal mugshots. So makikita natin dito yung ano niya, similarity niya with the present mugshots now. Yeah. Exoticism. So, um, yung anthropological gaze, yun nga yung way of looking, 
Um, ito, tinitignan niya yung primitive people to evoke and romanticize Western stories of colonial adventure. So, Western documented objects in the rural Philippines that he and his um, fellow photographers um, found exotic and intriguing. Ito, um, eroticizing native women. Kung naalala niyo kanina, na-mention na yung kinaption ng um, author na si Marquez, yung dress and undress. So, these photos were um, staged. Hindi siya, obviously, naman, staged siya. Kasi same people, same location, and naiba, naiba lang talaga yung damit nila. And ginawa ulit to juxtapose them. So, um, where's your stage subject? It's not with the use of documentary practice, but with his own narrative imagination as a storyteller. Teller, Garden of Eden, yun yung nakalagay doon. And his colonialist ideals. Ayan, so paulit-ulit natin sinasabi na yung um, motive ni Worcester as a, as a photographer is combined romanticism and conden- condescension. So he found himself committed to changing Filipinos' way of living um, kasi he was exoticizing na. So he wished that um, this Filipino culture were frozen in time. And the only way he could imagine to protect them was to put the Filipino culture into a museum. So Worcester and his colleagues also recorded Filipinos. Um, makikita natin yung second photo dyan, um, using Western technologies. So, like that photo, photos often showed how Filipinos were awed by Western technology, which juxtaposed two ways of life, one marked as advanced and the other as backward. So, the photographic record reveals um, um, more about public spectacles rather than um, cultural exchange and close observation. So, um, you part of this was clothing is a narrative of colonial abuse. So for Worcester kasi, parang important yung clothing that time kasi it's a, it represents a culture of progress and sobrang nag-effort siya para makuha lang yung style of uh, dress nila. And makikita natin dito yung um, sa first photo, ito yung suot ng mga women and Usually, sinasot nila yan pagka um, may dadating na phot- photographer. And sa first, ay sa second and third naman, dito pinakita na naka-sunday dress sila or yung parang more formal one and yung everyday clothes nila. And parang nung time na yon meron din ginawa na museum displaying clothes na people no longer wear. Constabulary soldiers. So, um, yung mga um, soldiers na to, Kinicture, uh, kinapture sila in uniform and without uniform para makita yung transformation ng mga tribal Filipinos during military services. Naniniwala si Worcester na Philippine Constabulary was both a civilizing influence and a more cost-efficient way to run an army. Ito yung, um, ito yung three photos na to showing the first men first in traditional dress with shields and spears tapos uh, second half half which was the uh, um yung first yung traditional dress nila and then yung half was the US military uniform and sa third photo slack sila nakagano na the series boasts that the elimination of the traditional Filipino ways of life so parang ito yung evidence of transformation of the old school igorot warriors into new school um soldiers in a range ni Brewster yung photo, photographs na to in a specific way para makwento niya yung story of the colonial uplift. So, to conclude nga, um, we can really say na Worcester was more of a storyteller. So, yung photographs ni Worcester circulated throughout United States. And this collection, this photographic collection, consists of a style um, that emer- emerged to a visual habit na makikita na nga natin yung power ng photography um, na originally in-name ni Worcester as anthropological studies na nag-end into storytelling um, purpose. So, um, yung visual habit na to, or like visual trope, um, is his use of photographic sequences. So he uses sequential sequential transformation um, 
that became the visual trope of depicting America's colonial enterprise. So, si Worcester, katulad nga nung sa Constabulary Soldiers kanina and uh, the rest of the other images, he puts images in a sequence to create his own narrative. Yung merong beginning, may middle, and the end. So, yung photographs in Worcester became persuasive stories to justify America's colonial endeavors in the Philippines. Then, we can really say na photographic archive is never complete at the mercy of the storyteller. Yun. Yun lang po. So, ito yung references kung saan namin nakuha yung mga PDFs and photos again. I'm Kaela Sherry Arguelles. I'm Sherry Bolo. Thank you. Thank you.